St. John chapter 3, verse 14 through 18 for our scripture text. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, <clears throat> even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Right? And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, right, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, Amen. but have everlasting life. Amen. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Amen. God bless his word yeah. on this morning. Amen. The measure of God's love. Amen. The measure of God's love. A subject, I'm sure, that words would not be adequate uh, to fully explain or to adequately cover the extent of God's love for mankind. Amen. We would be at a loss to try to find words of our own selves to do justice when we talk about God's love. Amen. How far reaching it is. Amen. It goes beyond our human comprehension Amen. of how far God's love reaches. Amen. Many have done, seeming to us, a uh, fairly good job in songs, uh, in writings, in expressing uh, the extent of God's love. Amen. I want to say that it reaches the highest mountain. Amen. And it flows through the Lord's valley. Yes, Lord. uh, the others will say that it goes beyond, amen, where the sky ends and encompasses all things which we have not yet come to know. Amen. amen. It even goes beyond death. Amen. amen. It does things which no one has been able to understand why and how. Amen. And the best we can say at the time is why and how can it love me so much. Amen. It's the kind of love that goes beyond and sees beyond our faults. Amen. It looks beyond our shortcomings and our failures. And it's always there when we need it. Amen. Amen. It's the kind of love that moved upon God that calls him for no other reason than just because he loved. To look down upon a sinful world and sin a come in flesh as a son to die in the place of sinners who were daily walking contrary to his will. Amen. And one songwriter said, that's love. Amen. Amen. When one can look beyond what you've done, what you're not, Amen. beyond your failures, and still love you. That's love. Amen. And the Bible tells us this morning in the Word of God that, that God loved the world so much. And John used uh, terms that we can understand. Not that the word that he used was adequate, but it was a word that we can relate to. We can get some a small comprehension of what God's love is all about, how far-reaching it really is. Amen. 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 When he said, amen, that God so loved the world. Amen. Or that God loved the world 
The condition of the world at that time was one that the Bible tells us, amen, that moved God so much that he knew if he did not do something, amen, that this world was surely doomed for eternal damnation. Amen. I've seen that thing is told uh, since the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Man from that time had lived in sin, going further and further away from God. Amen. He devised his own way of worshiping God. He forsook the law of God and decided that he would worship God his own way. All right. He felt within himself that whatever I want to give to God, amen, he have to accept that. Amen. That same attitude was built even today. The amen. men and women today want to give God what they want to give. All right. Amen. Want to serve God as they please and not according to His will. Amen. <coughs> Time the Bible tells us through the dispensations, rather than man getting better, he got worse and worse. Amen. Amen. He got evil continuously. Yes, sir. Hard and mind divides wicked imaginations. Amen. Uh, we read with some time of astonishment, uh, Amen, of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and cities likened unto them. We'll read about the hideous things that uh, men were doing to themselves and to others. And we see when the Lord came into the world that, amen, he came into a world that were on its way to destruction. Amen. amen. A world that was going farther away from him. And they all were lost. God's love went out. Amen. 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 As he sat in heaven and looked down upon his creation. That which he had made with his own hands. Yes. That which he had spoken into existence. Yes. That which he created to worship him. Seeing them doing everything but worshiping him. Amen. That which he created for his own glory. Were glorifying themselves. Amen. Many love the creature more than the creator. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, they broke his law. They amen, walked contrary to his will. Yet we find that God still looked down with compassion. Yes. Amen. Rather than sending out justice. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord is what we deserve. Rather than, amen, to take man off the face of the earth. Amen. His compassion went out. Amen. 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 And he loved us. Amen. When he had every right to destroy us. Jesus. Amen. Without a second chance. Amen. If he had opened the earth up and swallowed the whole world. He would have been justified. Had he stricken up with plagues and disease and sent no cure, he would have been justified. Amen. But rather than reach out with murder, with justice and havoc and vengeance, the Bible said that God so loved the world. Amen. He has to be God. Yes, Amen. Amen. Who can love like that but a God? Amen. Amen. He is love personified. He is the epitome of love. Yes. Amen. He's what love is all about. And the Bible tells us, amen, that God so loved the world. Amen. He loved the world so much. Amen. Rather than to destroy it, yeah. he would resolve in himself to do everything that he could to remedy yeah. or to find a cure for what was wrong with man. Amen. Yes. And I can imagine that God was like us. You know, sometimes when we look at what people do and how they do it, yet God still loves us. Yes, Isn't he wonderful? Amen. 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 Even when we walk in truth to his will, we know we're wrong. Amen. He still wakes us up every morning in the right heart. He still touches with a thing of love. He still feeds and makes a way for us despite our Amen. That's right. Amen. Yet to see this condition, Amen, and still loves us. Amen. With himself to provide a way that he might bring us back to himself. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in verse 16, St. John chapter 3, but God so loved the world, that God loved the world so much. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And the best term that John could use to help us to, to grasp, amen, the measure of God's love, he used the word so much. Amen. God so loved the world. God loved the world so much. Amen. Amen. That it prompted to do something. Yeah. Him being God, having all power in heaven. Now, let me tell you something. Amen. Nothing in this world that we can do or give to God adds nothing to him being God. Amen. He is still God. If we 
also by the spite of man had done. It moved him Amen. within his own self Amen. to do something about man's condition. But we could not help ourselves. God's love went out, his compassion went out. And the Bible went because he loved the world so much, because he had so much love for us, not wanting to see his creation, amen, doomed to eternal damnation. Amen. God did not establish to make hell for man. Amen. He did not create, amen, this destruction for mankind. Amen. 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 But because of man's sinful ways, hell is enlarging itself. But God amen. loved the world so much. Amen. Despite his condition, despite what he saw, knowing the hearts of men and women, knowing there were some who not had no mind at all to work for him. Amen. Yet the Bible said that God so loved the world. They can't just see him sitting in heaven oh, yeah. on his throne of righteousness. Oh, yeah. Angels praising him night and day. Oh, yeah. Having all power, who is the greatest being that ever lived but God himself. His self-exist himself. No one there to add anything to his glory. Yet it moved that he had so much love for us. Yeah, that's right, okay. That he laid aside his role of righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Laid aside his majesty yeah. as God. Yeah. And the Bible tells us that he took on human flesh. Yeah. Sinful flesh. Yeah. Made himself like us. Yeah. You're talking about love. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that for a God who loves somebody. Who see your condition and will put himself in your lap. And he might be able to raise you up to a higher height. Maybe you have to do it. That's love. Yeah. Love you, God. Yeah. Amen. To forget about who he was. Yeah. And take on a lesser form as a body. Yeah. And to come down in this world and die. Son, the only son that he had, he was the only son. But he all, he wrapped himself in flesh, yeah. he became the son of man. Right. Yeah. Present himself as a sacrifice. Yeah. As a sacrifice. Uh -huh. An offering. Gave his life. Offered up his life. Give the great God of heaven and earth. The omnipotent, the omniscient, and the omnipresent. The all wise God, the almighty God. Yeah. The self existent one, he who is holy. And then stooped down to the state of man himself and took on human flesh. And that's love. Amen. Why? Why? He could have done something else, but he offered himself. Now, when you talk about love, when God himself was willing to offer his own life, when justice, when justice, Right in demanding our death. Yeah. For the Bible had decreed that the day you sin, you shall die. Yeah. Yeah. And the sin of death that passed for all of us. Yeah. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. But the Bible said in due time. Yeah. Amen. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In due time. Yeah. Just in time. Okay. Christ died for who? The ungodly. Yeah. 
light. God had taken sinners who were nobody, who had nothing. Praise the Lord. That's what I will say here. We had no long list of famous names. Our genealogy contained no famous person. Praise the Lord. No one of notoriety, amen, was in our family lineage. Praise the Lord. We were not the best in our own community. We're not the best in our own progress. Had nothing to give, nothing to offer. But his love. His love powers. His love saved us. His love cleansed us up. His love sanctified us. His love put the Holy Ghost in us. And the Bible said it put us among those that are in light. Not only that, but he gave us something. It said he gave us an inheritance. An inheritance. You know, most of the people right now, if your mother, your father, your best friend, or your husband, or someone dies, you won't have much after the funeral. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 We don't have much inheritance to look forward to. An inheritance is that which you receive after the death of someone who has made you a beneficiary. Amen. Do you understand as a child of God that you are a beneficiary Amen. of God's praise the Lord? And that he has things in store for us that I haven't seen. He has never heard the thing that God has in store for them that love him. He gave us an inheritance among the saints in light. We got something to look forward to. You got something to hold on for. That's why you can't hold and give up now.
whosoever believeth in him, his son. Whosoever believeth in his son. Whosoever believeth in Jesus. Whosoever believeth in Jesus shall not perish. If you want to be saved, you have to believe in Jesus. If you want eternal life, you have to believe in Jesus. You have to honor the name Jesus. But have everlasting life. Amen. I have life that will never end. Glory. Death is not the end of life. Oh, no. And when you talk about eternal life Glory. and everlasting life, life that will never cease to be. Amen. But to a child of God, that terminology, eternal life, everlasting life, has a very
live for him. If he died for you, why is it so hard to live for him? Colossians chapter 1 says to us in verse 13 that God has delivered us from the power of darkness, from those strongholds that ruined our lives. Those things that caused him to have to come in the first place. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Sin had its grip on our lives. Sin had us bound, wrapped up in sin. But the power of God came in through his strength. The Bible said he delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Yeah. And the kingdom is where the king rules. Yeah. And you're saying today, Jesus ought to be the king of your life. Yeah. And when a king rules, he is son. Isn't that what the song says about God? He is sovereign. He does what he wants. When he wants. How he wants to. Whenever he wants to. And no one can question his authority. Well, as a child of God, God has that same authority over your life. If you're saved. He is sovereign. He's king, because 
Bible says he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. Verse 14, Colossians chapter 1, where I'm reading from, in whom we have redemption through his blood. It was the blood of Jesus. Yes. His precious blood. Yes. That was shed on Calvary. That purchased our redemption. Through his blood, we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sin. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Christ died that you might be free from your sin. Shed of blood. Pay the price for our redemption. But listen, the Bible says in verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God? Amen. The firstborn of every creature. Amen. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Yeah. Yeah. That tells me that God is divine. He's all sufficient within himself, and he doesn't need us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, God doesn't need us. Yeah. No, he doesn't. Are you out there this morning? Yeah. God doesn't need us. Yeah. Oh, he wants us. But he doesn't need us. Amen. And if I just set in my own way, yeah. and say, well, Lord, I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. If I turn my back and walk away from God, yeah. he is still God. Yeah. He is still almighty. Yeah. He is still holy and righteous. Yeah. It takes nothing away from God when we don't obey his will. Amen. 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 But the Bible says all they were created for him. Do you know that God created you for himself? Amen. Do we understand that? Amen. Everything that God created, he created for his own glory. Amen. Even the angels, he created them to praise him night and day. Millions of angels, night and day, that's all they do, they don't sleep. They don't take a break. But the Bible says all day long they're flying through the air saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And the angels stand in right to obey whatever his command may be. Oh, now, listen, look at love again. Sometimes he will dispatch an angel from heaven to come all the way down to Charlotte, North Carolina to move a prophet out of your way.
body which is the church. The church doesn't belong to the pastor. Doesn't belong to the trustee board. Doesn't belong to the leader board. Christ is the head of the church. He is the head. And when he's the head, he calls the shots. He makes the decisions. And as the head, he has the last word. Now you men ought to be able to that. Lord, we 